Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm trying to grow my channel and would really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button so I can get to a thousand subscribers. Today we're going to look at the Leaving Cert poem Easter Wings by George Herbert. Herbert was born in 1593, died 1633. He was born in Wales and educated at Cambridge. He became a member of Parliament but later left public life and became a priest in 1629. Herbert got married but died of TB in 1633. He was one of the metaphysical poets. Metaphysical poets wrote about their personal experience, used logical argument and often addressed God, starting with a rebellious tone and ending in submission to God. This poem has a really interesting layout. It's a shape poem or a pattern poem and this style was popular with the ancient Greeks. Easter wings. Look at that layout. Stanza two, the same. Now, when Herbert actually wrote this poem, it was printed like this. And as you can see, it looks like wings as the page was turned sideways. So what do you notice about the structure and layout of the poem? What does it look like? How do you think it relates to the title? What does Easter celebrate? And what might this mean to Herbert, a priest? The background of the poem. This poem is based on the Christian belief of forgiveness of sins and the possibility of joining Jesus Christ in heaven after death. The poet was a religious man who became a priest. Easter is when Christians celebrate the fact that Jesus died on the cross in order to forgive the sins of humans but was raised from the dead on Easter Sunday morning and soon after went into heaven. As a result, Jesus cleared us of Adam's original sin and all humanity has the possibility of having eternal life in heaven if they live good lives free from sin. <clears throat> in this poem, Herbert is feeling guilty about the sins he has committed and wanted to be allowed to get eternal life in heaven. He wants to soar, to fly up to heaven when he can, where he can be with Christ. He is so anxious to be with Christ in heaven that he does not want to wait for his time to die. He wants to join Jesus in heaven now because it is Easter time and he wants to fly like a bird up to heaven. So stanza one here on the left is written in Old English and translated into Modern English. So Lord who createst man in wealth and store. God, you created human beings and gave them everything they needed. Though foolishly, he lost the same. Though the first person, Adam, foolishly lost it all by sinning and being expelled from the Garden of Eden. Decaying more and more, growing more and more sinful, till he became most poor until he was poor in spirit. With thee, O oh, let me rise. God, <clears throat> let me rise from my own sin with you. As larks harmoniously, as songbirds rise in harmony with each other. And sing this day thy victories. And let me sing of all your triumphs. Then shall the fall further the flight in me then the fall of Adam and Eve will have simply allowed me to rise even higher. So let's go through each line of stanza one step by step. So Lord God, who created man in wealth and store. So God created Adam and Eve and gave us everything we needed in the beautiful garden of paradise. Though foolishly, he lost the same. So by sinning and eating the forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve were expelled from the beautiful garden and lost everything that God had gave them. Decaying more and more, Adam and Eve's life became more difficult and they became weaker and weaker and also they sinned more and more. Till he became most poor, 
till he became most poor until Adam started losing his faith, becoming poor in faith. With thee, O oh, let me rise. On Easter Sunday, Jesus rose from the dead and went into heaven. Herbert is calling out to Christ, Lord, allow him to rise too. As larks harmoniously, I want to fly up to heaven like larks do peacefully together and sing this day thy victories. When Adam and Eve ate the apple, this was the original sin. Jesus died to clear humans from this original sin and gave them a second chance to live good lives and get into heaven. The poet wants to rise into heaven and sing about Jesus' victory of rising from the dead and clearing our original sin so that we all have a chance of getting into heaven. Then shall the fall further the flight in me. The fall of Adam eating the apple and created original sin will inspire the poet to fly even higher as he imagines flying like larks towards heaven. What do you notice about the layout of the first four lines and how do they echo what the poet is talking about? So if I go back and look at the first four lines here, the layout is they start off long and they start getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And what's going on here is that they mirror, in fact, that God created Adam and Eve and gave them everything they needed. They were strong and then they started getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker when they got thrown out of the garden. Their faith became weaker and they themselves started to decay and get older. Okay, so now, stanza two. Old English, modern English. My tender age in sorrow did begin. My own youth started out in sadness. And still with sickness and shame, thou didst so punish sin. And you punished my sins by making me sick and ashamed that I became most thin until I grew thin, that is, spiritually impoverished. With thee let me combine, let me join with you and feel thy victory and experience your triumph. For if I imp my wing on thine, because if I attach my own wing to yours, affliction shall advance the flight in me. My suffering will only make me more able to fly and transcend all this sorrow. Stanza two, line by line. My tender age in sorrow did begin. The poet says his young life started in sadness. As a holy Christian and believer, he suffered greatly from sadness at the fact that as a human being, he is a sinner. And still with sickness and shame, he feels sick and ashamed of all the sins that he committed. Thou didst so punish me. He feels God punished him by making him feel sick and ashamed of all the sins that he committed that I became more thin. He says he became thin because he was so guilty and ashamed of his sins. With thee let me combine. Now it is Easter time and the poet feels that if his sins could be forgiven, he may have the chance of getting into heaven. To do this, he needs to combine or be with Jesus and feel this day thy victory. He wants to be with Jesus and experience what Jesus felt when he was victorious over death and sin on the cross and when he rose into heaven. For if I imp my wing on thine, the poem then imagines Jesus having very strong wings for flying into heaven. He imagines that his own wing is injured through sin and needs repair. 
To imp means to repair a damaged wing feather by attaching it to a new feather. He wishes he could attach his damaged wing to Christ's wing, then he could fly up to heaven with Jesus. So he wants to attach his broken wing, broken because of his sins, to Jesus' strong wings and fly up to heaven. And imping is when you fix a bird's feather by attaching another feather wing to it. Affliction shall advance the flight in me. Affliction means his guilt, shame and suffering that came from all his sins. When he thinks of all this pain and suffering and shame, this will motivate him to fly even higher and hopefully get into heaven. And this is why the shape of the poem, which is in the shape of wings, is very important. How do the words and images in the second stanza echo the first stanza? How does the poet resemble a how does the poem resemble a prayer? How does the poet use images of flight in the poem? What effect do they have? And what do you think the poet is trying to capture? Though foolishly he lost the same, what do you think he means by this? What effect does alliteration have on the poem? And do you like or dislike the poem? So let's look at some metaphors. The poet uses metaphors skillfully. Bird metaphors are used throughout. The poet imagines rising with Christ like larks. He hopes to imp or combine his damaged wing to Christ's powerful wings. He imagines being motivated to fly higher and further by thinking of the fall of Adam and Eve and of his past negative feelings and sufferings. Let's look at the religious references. Well, the poet himself was a priest. He mentions the fall of Adam and Eve. He also mentions Christ's Christ's death and resurrection into heaven. He asks the Lord to help him get eternal life in heaven. Easter Sunday is a good day to ask God for this and the poem after all is called Easter Wings. There is a regular rhyme scheme. Store, more and poor are rhyme A. Same and shame rhyme B. The Harmonious Lee and me are rhyme C, rise and victorize are victories D. So it would be A, B, A, B, A, C, D, C, D, C. Okay, and the second stanza, rhyme E, begin, thin, rhyme F, shame, became, <clears throat> and rhyme G, the, victory, me, and rhyme H, combine and thine. So rhyme E, begin, sin and thin. So we have E, F, E, F, E, G, H, G, H, G. Let's look at the rhythm. There are an even number of beats per line. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So lower two, created man in wealth and store. So foolishly he lost the same, decaying more and more till he became most poor. Yes, this is very, very interesting. Again, the line length we said earlier signifies that Adam and Eve started off strong and then got weaker. Just like the rhythm or beats in the line start off with many beats, 10 and going down to eight, six, four, two to show that Adam and Eve got weaker, just like the beats are getting weaker, but then he has hope because he wants to fly up to heaven with Jesus, so his belief and faith get stronger, two, four, six, eight, ten, as well as the lines getting longer to show that starts losing hope and starts gaining hope. It's exactly the same in stanza two, ten, eight, six, four, two, he thinks of his sickness and shame and he's getting weaker, but then he wants to combine his broken wing with Jesus' a strong wing and get stronger and fly up to heaven. So it's really, really clever that the rhythm and even line length is significant in getting the message across. 
So what do you think the beat, why do you think the beats decrease at the start of each stanza and then slow, slowly increase? And what might this represent? Let's look at alliteration. So the repeated consonant sounds. So the S sounds are repeated, which may signify the sounds of silent prayer. like, And the F sounds give energy to his imagined flight. So let's look at the S sounds. Greatest, store, lust, same, rise, larks, harmoniously sing victories. A lot of and then there's a lot of fall, further flight. I think that gives energy to keep going and not give up and give him power to go up to heaven. So alliteration repeated S and TH sounds in stanza two could also be the soft sound of prayer. So let's look at the S. Sorrow, still, sickness, shame, dist, sin. And the TH. Thou, that, thine, thee, thy, thine. If you found this video helpful, please click subscribe and come back for more revision later. See you soon. Bye.